Okay, students, what I want to do now is take you through a little presentation that I've made up for my Management 308 classes on effective presentations. This is not in the text. This is my own uh, set of notes. And it's a little PowerPoint presentation. I want to give you this uh, because if we were in a face-to-face -face class in the course, then you would have to be giving a stand-up presentation of your business plan. But since we're not, you're having to present a presentation. And so the preparation process would be the same as far as the presentation you have to submit for your grade in the course. This also hopefully will serve you for later on in your career when you have to do presentations. Let me, let me preface this all by saying that every one of us has a built-in natural fear of standing up in front of someone and saying something uh, for them to hear. And uh, I, I, I presume we could probably talk a lot about what that fear is and the components of the fear, but we all have that. To be effective in the business world, we have to learn to overcome that fear. You cannot, over the long haul, be effective in your business or in your career unless you learn to some level at least how to do a presentation. So let's spend some time now talking about that and uh, what, you know, what we can do to make ourselves better. In, uh, in doing the presentation. Now, here's the objectives of the presentation. I, I typically, you know, in, in any, any given presentation, I typically like to upfront outline what, it, what is it I'm trying to accomplish with this presentation. And I will tell you as my audience, this is what I'm trying to accomplish, and then I'll proceed to uh, try to, you know, to accomplish that, to present those messages, and then I will will summarize it at the end. So basically, the the process that I use here is the old tell, tell, tell process for presentations. Tell your audience what you're going to present, what you're going to say, uh, say it, and then tell your audience what you said. So you tell them what you're going to tell them, you tell them, and then you tell them what you told them. Okay, that's the tell, tell, tell um, uh, process in doing presentations. So. What we're going to do is we're going to try to establish some fundamentals for making uh, effective presentations. We're going to try to provide a basis for improving with experience. <clears throat> we want to embed in the whole idea of presentations the concept of communicating a message and then understand the importance to, to your career and your life success to overcoming any issues that you might have with making presentations. I would, I would encourage every person in this university to learn how to do effective presentations as a part of your college education. And then we want to assist you in overcoming the natural fear of speaking a little bit. Primarily the best way to overcome the natural fear is to force yourself to stand up in front of every group you can possibly get an audience with to talk to them to make a presentation. Experience is the best, uh, is the best uh, process or best method for overcoming fear. Now what are the major elements in a presentation? There's really four. Uh, the first one is your strategy, the second one is the preparation pro part of it, and then the third one is the presentation, and the fourth one is the critique that oftentimes people fail to do because it's just uh, the, the, uh, the peak of activity is the presentation itself, and so it's a lot of trouble to come back and revisit a presentation that's already made that you may not uh, ever present again. So what we're going to do is we're going to spend a lot more time on the strategy and pre pre preparation part than we do on the presentation part. And then we're going to force ourselves to not omit the critique. And that's going to be required. You, the critique is really required in order to, to improve your presentation skills with time. So let's look just a little bit <coughs> at strategy. When, I'm, when I talk about strategy, one thing that I think every person that's going to make a presentation needs to do is to sit down and say, what is it that I want to communicate? What is my message? What do I want the listener to hear and retain? So that basic process or that basic structure or, or uh, boundaries need to be established right up front. This is what I want to communicate. This is uh, what I want the listener to hear and retain. And the second thing you need to do in forming your strategy is understand who is your audience. Who, in general, are the listeners, the people who will be listening to your presentation? There may be three or four. There may be 3,000. But in general, you have to determine who are my listeners. 
then ask yourself, are there decision makers in the audience? Will there be people sitting in listening to my presentation who will be decision makers later on in my process uh, for whatever it is I'm trying to accomplish with the presentation? Let's say that I'm giving a presentation on a proposal that I've made to a key customer. Then the decision makers are those people who will be deciding whether my proposal is the winning proposal or not. So you need to determine ahead of time, are there decision makers who will be listening to my presentation? Now the presentation does not always have to be staged <coughs> in your customer's facilities or in your customer's con conference room or in some uh, confined setting like that. This could be a presentation at a major business conference or a major trade show where you know that those decision makers for that particular proposal are present. This is your opportunity to present the message that you want them to hear about your proposal, even though there's others there who will not be aware, really, of, of the details of that proposal, nor even know that you've submitted a proposal. So all I'm saying here is be aware of who your audience are, uh, are. be aware of there are decision makers that could impact your business sitting in that audience, and think about the message that you want them to hear. I uh, can tell you a lot of stories about uh, those those type of experiences, but you have to think ahead of time that every every presentation or every meeting is not just any old meeting. There may be somebody there that you really want to hear a particular message. Then you ask yourself the question, will the competition be present? If they are present, let's say you're at a trade, trade uh, association meeting and you're making a big keynote presentation, you know full well that you'll have some competitors sitting in the room. So you want to tailor your presentation so that you're not giving away secrets, nor are you causing something to develop that could, could, uh, could negatively impact a future decision on your business. The last question is, will hostile media be present? You say, oh, our media is never present in our presentations. Well, that's not always true. Again, if you're standing up in front of a trade group or any type of a, a public group, there may very well be media present. And there may very well could be hostile media present. When I was in, in industry, I always tried to make sure that I knew uh, who were the trade media who were su supportive of our cause and who were the trade media that were hostile to our cause. And then I tried to play to each one as best I could. So you just have to understand that. You have to know ahead of time, is, is there, will there be hostile media present? Now, uh, a, a strategy, kind of a brief time, time out here. Generally speaking, it's safe to say that the media is never your friend. Never assume that anybody from the media is your friend, whether you've known them for a hundred years or not. The time will always avail itself for them either through intention or through just oversight to really cause you some misery in, in the media. So just be aware that the media is not your friend nor are they your enemy. So you want to be open and honest with the media, but understand that just trying to be nice to them, trying to cultivate a relationship, is not con uh, cu cultivating a friendship. The media is not your friend. Okay? They are a colleague, they are another professional, they are whatever you want to call them, but they are not your friend. <coughs> On the area of research, you want to always spend time and effort answering the questions. Try to research your presentation material ahead of time to understand what are the questions going to be. What are the likely questions that could pop up in this presentation? And then how do I best reach this audience with the, with the, uh, with the answers, with my research? I, I have a practice that I always try to spend time thinking about who is my audience? What are the characteristics of the typical person sitting in an audience where I'll be speaking? And how do I reach that person? How do I connect with that person? If you were to come to one of my classrooms and sit in on a lecture, you will see that I constantly scan the classroom looking for eyes. And the eyes, the E-Y-E-S, the eyes tell me the message of who's listening, who's, who's connecting, who's not connecting. Okay, so this is the strategy. Now let's go to preparation and talk about that a little bit. Remember we said that we're going to spend a lot more time in these two blocks than we do in this block right here. So preparation, the first thing
thing about preparation is know the venue, know the place where you're going to be making a presentation. What type of meeting room is it? Is it an auditorium? Is it a conference room? Is it a personal office? Is it just some out, you know, hole in the wall room somewhere with no no facilities in it? What what is the what is the venue? What is the meeting room? Then, uh, as a kind of a um, safety precaution, always prepare any presentation for a one-on-one -on -one presentation if necessary. I'll never forget one time I was on a business trip to Israel to make a presentation to some of their Ministry of Defense people, and. I was had been thinking all along that uh, we will probably be in a conference room or in some small meeting room where you know 10 or 20 people can convene. We ended up in a, an out of the way office with very little furniture in it and no facility, no equipment, no blackboard, no nothing. And I had to make my presentation to three or four of the people that I needed to present to. So fortunately, I had pr I had practiced this uh, strategy of preparing for one on one. And I was ready to go when we got to the meeting room. And the way you handle that is, <clears throat> if you're worried about having equipment that allows you to project or allows you to use a computer screen, then either carry the computer with you. In this case, I could not have carried that computer in, into the facility. Or have a hard copy there that, can, that you can use one-on-one. <clears throat> -on -one. And so typically the best way to do that is to have a hard copy of your presentation. So if someone says, give me your presentation, and you sit down across the desk or side by side and flip through the hard copy to do your presentation. Understand what type of seating arrangements will be available in your venue and where, the, where your key audience will be sitting. What will be the location of your key audience? And then understand the idiosyncrasies, syncrasies, syncrasies of key people. Now, let me tell you why I say this. A lot of times you'll be making a presentation in a conference room or a boardroom. <coughs> And there will be executives sitting around the table. And so what you want to try to learn ahead of time is who, who will be the executives, who, who are the key people in this audience, and do they have any habits or idiosyncrasies that I need to be uh, aware of? Uh, for example, um, we had a, a chairman one time who loved to flip ahead in presentations. So typically the process would be a speaker comes in, gives everybody a hard copy to monitor what he's saying as he goes along and then proceeds to go through a PowerPoint presentation. Midway through the presentation, the chairman interrupted him and said, go back to page three. And there was an immediate fumbling and a trying to go back through all the charts and figure out where page three was. And the reason why there was a problem there was that there were no page numbers nor chart numbers. So there was no way for the speaker to know where page three is. So some people in an audience like that will always, when they see a key mistake, they'll always try to catch you on that mistake. And so that speaker got a real good message out of that, and the message was always put chart numbers on your chart so that if somebody wants to go back, I can go back to it. So understand the audience, understand the key people, understand the speaker location. Uh, in some boardrooms, for instance, or some executive conference rooms, the person sitting at the head table is always one or two individuals. And let's say you're in, a, in, a, in an executive uh, conference room of some sort, the president comes in, sits down at the head, the head chair, which typically most presidents with big egos like to sit in, or most anybody else who would like to be president with a big ego likes to sit in, because that supposedly is a position of power. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. And then on the left hand will be maybe the, uh, maybe the CFO of the company. On the right hand will be the executive VP. And then going down the table will be a certain pecking order. And so you need to understand that. You need to understand who will be sitting where and who are the people in this group sitting around the table that I, that I really want to reach. Um, one of the uh, other things you need to understand, too, is what is the position or location of presentation aids. A presentation aids could be a flip chart, uh, an easel, or a whiteboard, or it could be other things like that. You need to know ahead of time, where are these things located, and do I have the, the correct set of uh, tools to be able to use them if I need to? For instance, if I get a question where I've got to do some kind of on-the-fly uh, diagramming, uh, then I would want a whiteboard that I could I could mark on, or at least a flip chart located on an easel close by. 
So there's a lot of things to think about uh, in in a uh, in a presentation. I think I missed one here. Go back to speaker position and location. Uh, oftentimes in a conference room, uh, you'll have a podium that's set to one side of or the other of the of the audience or of the of the board table. And so you need to know where that is ahead of time because know whether you've got to be ambidextrous in your pointing or ambidextrous in the way you speak or do you have room to move around the table and talk. So the, you have to figure out where, the, where is the best position for the speaker in any conference setting or any presentation setting in order to communicate with the audience, with your listeners. Know what kind of equipment that you'll have for uh, supporting you. Do you have a podium? Do you have a microphone? Is there sound and lighting control? Who controls all that for you? Is Are the controls on your podium? Or will there be somebody uh, sitting uh, behind the screen or in, in, a, in a, an ante room waiting for you to tell them what to do? Look for what the available equipment is, boards, flip charts, etc. Look for speaker interface and control. You know, where are the controls? Who, who flips the slides? Is there a laptop? Who provides a laptop? And so forth. And then look for the different types of media interfaces that you might have. There's, there's not, uh, charts and slides, not much anymore, but there's a lot of PowerPoint, a lot of images that we store on uh, flash drives or on our own laptops that we want to use or on our smartphones. I've seen a lot of presentations recently off of smartphones, a very clever idea. You carry it around in your pocket. You interface with a uh, with a projector and you're ready to go. Now, <clears throat> pre always prepare for a disaster. Not so much more on projector bulbs anymore, unless you're in a, in a situation where uh, you're providing the projector and you're providing the laptop and you're providing whatever ever you need. Then you have to worry about the projector and you've got to make sure the spare bulb is set aside. Always, but always have a disaster plan. Ask yourself what could go wrong in this presentation, and if it does happen, how do I circumvent that? How do I work through? those little disasters that typically always occur and they are almost guaranteed to occur in the most critical presentations that you have to make. <clears throat> Look for your support media and prepare for that. What kind of media type will you be able uh, to use? Will there be video capability? Will you have internet links, Wi-Fi? Uh, what, uh, what will the audience expect uh, hard copies? Do they expect uh, handouts of any sort? And so just, uh, just understand the, the media makeup in any presentation venue scenario. For instance, in today's world, you would probably uh, be willing to or you'll be asked to provide me a, uh, a copy of that presentation electronically, if you will. That could be a question you'll get. So be prepared to do that. The way you do that is get the names and, and uh, email addresses of those who want of copies of what you're presenting and then send it to them after your presentation. Uh, always be aware of and manage the number of charts or slides that you have. Now why do I say that? Oftentimes when a person comes in to give a presentation, you're invited to give a presentation, you will always be given a time budget for your presentation. Uh, Mr. Smith, come give us a presentation on whatever and we'll give you 15 minutes to speak. So the minute you walk in for that 15 minute presentation and you've got 30 uh, charts or 30 PowerPoints that you're going to go through, you, that tells me immediately you, you won't even have a chance to make it. And so the worst thing that can happen is you have a fixed time window on your presentation, you come in with too many charts and you either have to breeze through the charts without making your message or you get caught halfway through when the clock stops. And so that's always a disaster setting. So know the time budget that you have and work to that time budget. Over the years, I know that typically it takes me about two minutes on average to do to address a chart in my presentation. So if I've got 20 minutes, I will have no more than 10 charts in a presentation and sometimes less than that because I know there'll be some charts that I'll spend more time on. So think about that and, and plan it ahead of time. If I've got a, a message that I want to convey, and I have a time budget, then I know exactly how many charts I can present maximum. Then what I can do after that process is have backup slides and data information slides that I can go to very quickly with a laptop and should somebody ask the question, I can pull that information out on the screen for people to see. So you can plan that, but make sure you honor your budgets. The worst thing that can happen 
it, for me at least, I will tell you, whenever I'm in a presentation situation and I'm the audience and I know there's a 10 or 15 minute budget and the presenter comes out with about 30 PowerPoints that they're going to try to work through, I turn them off immediately because I know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen ahead of time. So it's just a complete turn off for me. My attention switch just switches off whenever I see that. Worry about the design of your charts, your styles, your color, your formats. Be consistent in your format. If you use bullets on, bullets on chart one, use bullets on chart two, three, and four thereafter. If you use phrases on chart one, use it all the way through. If you use sentences in your format, use them all the way through. Be consistent in your format. Be conservative in your design. Uh, for, for, for professional presentations, I really uh, think that if you try to use understated colors, you'll be better off most of the time. Make sure they're professional in the way they're presented. Make sure they're, that they're uh, 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 not distracting in the way they're presented. Because if, what you want to do is you want the colors to support the message. You really want no distractions from the message of the chart. chart. So you want to avoid over-design, avoid flashy charts. I have a lot of students who give me presentations and they, they go out of their way to come up with some really screwball transition schemes on their charts, recognizing that uh, that, ha that really detracts from the presentation more than it supports the presentation. And charts that are very uh, uh, noisy color-wise and very flashy color-wise, uh, typically in a professional situation, will be distracting from the message that you're trying to get across. You want the media to support and amplify the message. Remember that. The media supports and amplifies the message. No. So let's look at <coughs> the preparation and uh, process of developing the material. And I'm just going to step through these very quickly. First of all, you want to plan ahead and you want to develop ahead. So develop your presentation and your plan well ahead of time so that you'll have plenty of time to finalize and get it ready. Each chart or diagram should be a message. When you're in the middle of giving a presentation and you're using supporting charts or uh, let's say PowerPoint images, then you want to make sure each one of those has a message and make sure that you understand ahead of time what that message is. So what I try to do and what I recommend you do is for every chart in your presentation, understand ahead of time what that message is so that when the chart pops up on the screen or on the computer or wherever, I don't have to look at that chart to talk because I know what the message is. I know what I'm trying, the point I'm trying to get across with that image. So you want to know the message and know the obje objectives overall of your presentation. So ahead of time, we decided what our message was going to be. Remember what that message is and stick to it. Know what your objectives is. What do you want to accomplish with the presentation? Do not let yourself be drawn off the path of your objective, off the path of your message. Uh, know what the message is and don't be afraid to repeat that message in, in various ways as you go through a presentation. Allow ample time in the preparation process for doing checking, for doing dry runs, for editing, for redoing. Really important that you do dry runs on, on important presentations. I never gave, and, and to this day I do not give an important presentation without a dry run. I, work, I walk through it either with my wife or some other friend or with a test audience and say, what, let me walk you through this presentation. This is what I'm trying to present, and I, I present it as exactly as though I were presenting to the live audience. Dry run in the actual venue, if possible. Uh, being in a venue that you that you've been there ahead of time, and you understand it, and you understand the areas where you can position yourself, and you understand how the audience is going to be laid out. <laughs> it helps when you build your confidence if you will dry run your presentation in the actual venue. Sometimes you can't do that. Sometimes you're uh, going to another city, you only have an hour or two before your presentation, so you, you don't have a chance to dry run in your venue, but you can add dry run just about any place you want to where you can get one or two people to critique your presentation. But I would say this, even if you're just getting in there an hour ahead of time, get in early enough to get a feel for the venue, to understand its layout and understand where you'll be staying, and I mean standing, and how you get to the point where you'll be standing. So. Get familiar with the venue ahead of time to the extent that you possibly can. After the presentation is done, and sometimes in dry run part of it, listen to critique. Do not let your feelings be hurt. Uh, th this is a really critical, 
critical thing to understand, and it's, it's one of maturity more, more than anything else. Uh, your ability to get through a critique of your presentation without letting your feelings get hurt is a measure of your maturity. Just remember that. If, uh, if you're mature and experienced in what you're trying to do and you're really a professional at it, you're going to appreciate critique that is sometimes negative. You will appreciate people telling you the truth about your presentation. This is part of what I call the ugly baby syndrome. Every mother thinks that her baby is pretty, and I'm telling you, there are some ugly babies around. So just remember that. You may have made, you may have a presentation that's an ugly baby, and you need to come to grips with that. Same thing about business plans and business ideas. Uh, there are some ugly babies among that group as well. Okay, let's talk about the presentation just for a little bit. Remember, we have spent a lot of time on these two. We're going to go to the presentation now. And here you'll see two or three different formats that I've given you examples of. Here's a blue background with yellow points and uh, white titles. Typically, the, the lighter contrasts do better on a presentation a screen than the darkers. The worst thing you can do is come up with a black background and uh, trying to show color photos or something else on it. Just be very, very careful about very dark, uh, uh, hard-hitting uh, backgrounds for your, for your presentation. This is one, the, the blue color, the, the kind of the moderate blue color is pleasant to the eyes and not harsh. The contrast is not over, overly emphasized. Two, on avoid reading. Avoid too much shuffle. This is when you, particularly when you've got multiple speakers like you will have with your uh, team business plan presentations, which you guys who are listening to this will not have to do. But avoid too much shuffle. If there's multiple speakers, try to try to minimize how much shuffle you have. Sometimes if you've got multiple speakers and you want to move through a presentation fairly quickly, both of you come out at the same time, stand side by side, and, and switch on cue. And this way you can kind of switch on cue several times if you want to. Remember the message and tell, tell, tell it. Read your listeners. The eyes have it. Get up. Get with it. Get off. Tell, tell, tell. Get up. Make your presentation. Complete your presentation. Get off the stage. Be prepared always for a question and answer and for any discussion after your presentation. Be open about that. Don't be afraid to address a harsh, critical question or potentially critical question about what you're doing. Always remember, you want to be truthful, you want to be honest, and you don't want to be defensive when all, that, when all those questions start to hit. Let's look at critique just for a little bit. <clears throat> always critique a presentation. This requires discipline. There's always a built-in tendency because you worked really hard, you've gotten yourself up psychologically for the presentation, now there's a little bit of a psychological letdown after it. You've got to force yourself to get past that and, est and establish the discipline of reviewing your presentation. Self-critique as a minimum and ensure honesty to yourself and a recorded critique with a coach is the best way to do it. Where, where you're, you've had a recording of your presentation and now you and your coach are going back through that recorded presentation and the coach can point out to you uh, tips that you need to hear as you go through. This is the way you learn to improve. This is the way you learn to get better with each presentation that you make. So this leads to improved capabilities. This include, uh, leads to growth in your abilities to make presentations and it helps you above all to overcome that natural fear that everybody has. So remember, in your presentations, we're going to go through a strategy process where we determine the message and we plan carefully. We're going to go through a preparation process where we do careful design and structure, and we're going to do some dry runs so we get through with that. And then we'll go through the presentation where we get up, get with it, and get off. We, we know exactly what we want to say. We say it, and we get off. And then we go through a critique, critique where we do an honest assessment of the presentation and come up with ideas for how we can improve the next presentation. Okay, this completes our presentation on... Uh, on how you give presentations. This is something that's not in the text. It's something that I've developed and I want to pass along to you guys based upon my many years of experience of giving uh, public presentations. <laughs>